Hi, my name is Rick Habgood, and I'm going to be hosting this segment of Citizens Forum. Uh, I'd like to introduce my guest for, for this segment, Connie Moore. And <laughs> thanks for being here, Connie. And uh, Connie is a campaign organizer for the electoral reform referendum at, right here on South Island. Now, you hosted, Connie, a, uh, an after-referendum event at your home. That's right. <laughs> and uh, you and approximately 25 other people gave your opinion as to what went right, what went wrong, and what the next steps are, if there are any next steps. And now what you did was you put out a submission that was called Pro Rep, What's Next? And I looked at it, and I think that that's what I'd like to talk about. That's great. I'm yeah. happy to talk about that. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a wonderful piece. And now, first off, uh, what, well, first off, um, what advice would you give to a passionate PR advocate that does not want to give up the fight? Well, I don't think the fight is over by a long shot, and I encourage people to talk about the shortcomings of first past the post at every possible opportunity. A lot of us are calling it disproportional representation because that's what it is. There are a lot of things wrong with it that many people have no clue about, and so we need to talk in personal conversations, in uh, things like this, uh, in organizations that we belong to, social media posts, all kinds of things like that. We need to talk about what is wrong with our current voting system. And, you know, Trudeau's broken promise at the federal level, he was acknowledging before 2015 that first past the post was unfair and broken and needed to be replaced, and we need to keep reminding him of that. <laughs> uh, we discovered from our pro-rep campaign here in BC that unfortunately going negative works, and that, uh, you know, when I was doing door-to-door -door things for whatever organization I was volunteering for, the fact that so many people didn't know that first past the post is disproportional, for example, or that creates what we call a, minor, a majority government, but it's actually a false majority. It's pretty rare to have 50% of voters actually support a government in power under first past the post. Things like that we need to, to talk about a lot. And at the same time, we need to celebrate those PR countries, pro-rep countries, that are doing things that we admire. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, that's the advice I would give. Okay, well that's great. On an individual level, it's very important because a lot of people just don't, even though they have, they're very passionate about proportional representation, uh, they, 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 a lot of them just don't know how to approach uh, promoting it. Or they might think that because the referendum is over, that the subject is taboo. Well, far from it, especially when we've got a federal election coming up. Okay. Yeah. So that's the individual part. But let's say you have an individual that's within a political party. Okay. Okay. And uh, very, very, very passionate about proportional representation, and they want their party to feel the same way. What, what, what advice would you give them? Well, there's all kinds of levels that people can work within political parties, and I think it depends upon whether this person in question that you're talking about has any specific role, um, but even if you don't, if you think you're just the average citizen, uh, you know, you can go to your MP and you can have a conversation about proportional representation and how it's still something that, uh, you know, it needs to be. I mean, it is, it is just the right thing to do to have proportional representation. And so um, within a political party, if you have any clout other than just being a citizen, which should be a lot of clout, um, what you're doing, I think, is trying to embed in the platform of your party 
that proportional representation will be implemented if that party in the next election, if it results in some, some degree of power to that party, whether it's in a minority government or a false majority government, that that, that MP or that party leader will support proportional representation. That's the kind of work you would need to do. Okay, so how about if I'm in the party and I, I and you know, let's say that I have a, let's say I'm doing campaigning the way, the way that you do, you can come, you can approach the party, you can approach the leader and say, I don't like referendums. I would rather actually just implement. Is that a possibility within a party? Do you think that the, the parties are ready for that? Well, I don't know if they're ready for it, but it is absolutely the way that we should go. Referenda are not generally the right way to enact really important legislation that requires a great deal of thought. I mean, let's, let's face it, we elect governments to represent us. We don't expect every single thing that gets put into law to be dissected and understood and voted upon by everybody in the populace. That's why we elect other people to do it for us. So most most important things do get put in place by legislation, not by referendum, and that's one of the reasons why. I don't know if this is an appropriate time to mention this, but I was likening the referendum process and the importance or the negative aspects of it to trying to achieve uh, women's suffrage. For example, most countries in the world now have women voting, and they have had it since the early 1900s. Actually, when I was looking this up, where it was this, it's on this other sheet here, it was 1893 in New Zealand. Wow. But most of those countries achieved it through legislation by elected governments, possibly by subsequently changing their constitutions if they had to do that, not by referendum. In fact, the only countries that I could see that um, achieved women's suffrage by referendum were Liechtenstein, the Philippines, Liberia, and our favorite Switzerland. <laughs> Women finally got the vote. The men gave it to them in 1971. 1971. And some of them, uh, in some of the cantons, in some of the smaller areas, not until 1990. So that's what referendums do. They're very good at maintaining the status quo. No kidding. And I think most people would agree, and even the, the BC referendum process, I think people agree with the values of proportional representation. We should have proportional representation all over Absolutely. in Canada. And what happened in that referendum took us in a different direction. I think people were voting not so much for for or against pro rat, but because they didn't really know. Mm -hmm. They were overwhelmed, yeah. mm -hmm. et cetera. Information, yeah. education. Yeah. Uh, so tell me something. How about if you're in a citizens group? Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give to the person that is in Dogwood or United Church or uh, the Sierra Club? Well, I think we all have to work into pro rap with our own base, whatever it is. You just gave some examples. Sure. And I know there's some organizations that have a heck of a time getting anybody to run for office. And so, you know, the, the, whoever's willing to run, you know, the sacrificial lamb, they, they get elected. <laughs> but if you actually have elections in the organization that you are part of, working into having a proportional system within whatever this organi organization is, gives people an experience to understand what proportional representation is and how well it works. And then they become a model, perhaps, for other, other groups and other levels, too. So yeah, um, any kind of group that has elections could be looking at establishing proportional representation. In and my just mind. advocating within the group. 
advocating it, explaining it, educating people about it. Let's try it. You know. The, the difference yeah. between proportional, disproportional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, and, and, and lastly, uh, we lost by a wide margin. Uh, what do you say to the people who gave so much of their time, their energy, and their money, yet they came up empty? Well, we came up empty only in the sense that we didn't actually win a chance to try proportional representation in the province of BC. But I don't think we lost in the sense of having proportional representation be something that should be in our future. That the, the fairness of it, the um, having every vote count, um, having less adversarial collaboration, those were all values that voters on the doorstep or on the telephone, at least to me and to a lot of the people that I was working with, we were finding that people were agreeing with those kinds of things. It's just that there was too much educating to do in too many levels. And so I think people actually do support proportional representation once they understand it. And once they understand that we actually don't have 30% of our vote translating to 30% of the seats. So a lot of people would say to me, well, don't we have that now? Well, no, mm -hmm. first past the post doesn't do that. It distorts the, the representation. Right. So I think that um, a lot of people ended up voting no in question number one, first past the post versus pro rep, because they didn't really understand it. They didn't um, realize how it would help them as individuals, the province as a whole, and we need to inspire people to look at change. So we go back to the first thing you asked me, which was, um, what do you, what do you want, pe what, do you, what would you tell people to do? Well, people need to understand that first past the post is unfair, anti-democratic. That's why most of the countries in the world don't use it anymore. Um, the US, the UK, and Canada are basically the only large countries that still use first past the post, and it's inertia, it's uh, people in power not really wanting it, maybe saying they want it, but perhaps not actually wanting it. So people, um, we need to inspire people to change from our unfair system. Connie? I think we're out of time. Gosh, we're just getting going. <laughs> we, we, we could go for another half hour. Anyway, federal election, we, that's our next opportunity. That's right. Plus, just talking it up everywhere, anytime. Anytime, yeah. anywhere, and thank you so much for coming in. Connie Moore, it's been a pleasure, as always. And uh, your, your insight and your energy and your positiveness really reflects and uh, what you wrote with the uh, pro rep, what's ne next step, wonderful. Thank you, everybody. My name is Rick Habgood. And uh, I, first of all, actually, I'd like to thank Shaw staff. And I'd like to also thank all the volunteers. Catch you next time.